Alright, so on Saturday I wandered down to Free Geek Vancouver, great place by the way, looking for an AT case. They didn't have an AT case, but they did have this old AT computer. It was, you know, it's pretty beat up, but it was like 20 bucks, so I dragged it home and let's take a look. The front's got a six-speed creative CD-ROM, a five and a quarter floppy. This is fake, but I think there actually is one that's like fallen inside. Big clicky power switch. Um, what does that say? Kix personal computer uh, case badge. I'm assuming that's one of those uh, local computer stores long since defunct. A two-digit um, frequency display. It's going to be a little problematic for my purposes. Um, turbo button, reset button, key lock. I think these vents are fake. Yeah, these vents are fake. Yeah, okay, so this is the drive cage, which is... Oh, there are no screws in this. Right. There's one, but it's loose. Yeah. Alright, so the hard drive's long gone, but there is a floppy drive. Let's uh, try to get that on. So here we have the genericest of generic floppy drives. I don't see any label on here. Oh, wait. There we go. I stand corrected. This is a Fujitsu floppy drive. Does it say when it was manufactured? I think one of these is a date code, but I can't read it. Um, so if this works, it looks okay. So we might be able to use this. So we have a creative six-speed 3D ROM, six-speed CD-ROM. I don't know if this is what interface is this using. Well, that's helpful. It just says bus. So I don't know if this is IDE or if it's a uh, the early creative interface, which I think is like a rebranded Mitsumi. It's 40 pins. That's not helpful. This is a five and a quarter inch floppy. <laughs> I've kind of always wanted one of these. I have no use for it. I have no five and a quarter discs. Uh, my dad had some, but they're long gone, and I, I never used them, but I just think this is so cool. Yeah, it's a modem of some description. It's probably pretty old. It's an 8 bit ISA. Um, ISA, ISA. Gotta pronounce it ISA. Um, probably not a win modem. I don't know. I don't know much about modems, but I'm taking this out because I'm worried that it's been uh, damaged mechanically because it was was bent pretty good. It still got the bend, um, and the drive cage was resting on top of it. So uh, this is a little disappointing. This is just a CT2800 Vibra 16S uh, Sound Blaster variation. It has a real OPL. That's good. I think that's a wave blaster header, but it also has some um, a hanging notes bug. And it's, it's just a, it's nothing special. I mean, so it's okay. I might use it, but it's nothing special. This is a very interesting card. Look at this. This, look at how little logic there is to it. There's no like controller. It's just glue straight onto the, um, straight onto the bus. And it has like a, an audio output that just goes to those jacks. You know what? This might actually be... Does it say? Yeah, yeah, IDE. So I'm assuming this is an IDE controller, and that makes sense. Uh, the proprietary interfaces, I think, actually required more translation. IDE, at least originally, was based on the the AT, the, um, AT bus, the... Uh, the geez, why am I having so much trouble? The, the ISA bus, the AT bus. Um, and they just were like, oh, let's put it on a cable, hook a hard drive to it. So at first I was pretty confused about what this system actually was. I was thinking, is this a 486 or is it a 386 with a 486 upgrade? 
because there's no VL bus, there's no PCI, and it only takes 30 pin sims, which are not things that I would expect from a 486 motherboard. It also appeared to have what looks like an FPU socket, but it has a 486 overdrive in it, and the upgrade for a 386 system would have been a rapid CAD. So it turns out that this is an early 486 motherboard. It is a 486 WB4A. I have no idea who made it. Uh, it might have been Opti themselves. It might have been Winbond. I can't find any info on this motherboard. Also, that's not a 40 megahertz overdrive like I thought it was. It is a 100 megahertz DX4 overdrive. This is a very cool system. Maybe not that practical, but very cool. All right, so here's how much I trust uh, the 30-year-old <laughs> 30 power supply in here. So most of my stuff is plugged in over there. I've got a, a used to be an outlet strip, now it's a UPS. The outlet's actually behind the printer. I trust this thing so much that I'm not even plugging into the same outlet lest it blow up the breaker. I'm plugging into that one over there with my fan. It's not important. I'm plugged in the floppy drive, so if it posts, I can try booting. Uh, MS-DOS, and uh, you know what, well, fuck it, let's... Alright, well, here goes nothing. As in literally nothing, because the fucking power supply is probably dead. Whoa, what the shit? Okay, so I bumped the power switch, and it, like, came to life, so let's try it. I think it's in the position. Okay. What do we have? We have a ROM BIOS at some point. Um, keyboard error. Yeah, because I don't have a keyboard plugged in. Um, okay, so it looks like we got 8 megabytes of RAM. I could have sworn it had more last time. Center setup. Hey, it has a working beeper. Oh my god, what the fuck is this? Uh, Jesus Christ. Um, Okay, that's, um, yeah, that's better. Okay, it thinks it's 1980. That's the beginning of the epoch, so the battery is totally dead. Um, it's like, I think that's A. Which one's A? I honestly have no idea. Retrospect, I should have plugged in my GoTech um, because that's where all my uh, utilities and shit are. But we can try this one. I mean, this is just uh, a DOS, I think. Is that plugging it upside down? Hey, I got the I got the right position on the cable because it's reading the right floppy drive. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so that's, that is 8 megabytes of RAM. Uh, <laughs> okay, no, this is a, this is a uh, Windows 98 boot disk. Like, I have some test utilities I would like to run, but they're not, I don't have them on an actual floppy. I ended up pulling out my GoTech and swapping it in, and I tried SpeedSys, and the results were dismal. Then I realized that I had the turbo button backwards, pushed it in, and all was well. All in all, this is a really interesting system, and it's pretty cool that it still works. I wasn't expecting that. This is clearly an early 486 machine from the early 90s that's been upgraded over the years with new things like the CD-ROM drive. And it's kind of a shame to pull it apart since it's such a neat machine, but there's two really serious issues. Uh, one is the broken power switch. Yeah, I can finagle it into working, but it arcs, it sparks, it's scary. It needs to... something must be done. And the other, of course, is the leaking clock battery. It's all too common. This one's leaking too, and uh, the damage doesn't seem to be too bad. It's only cosmetic, but I definitely need to get that off of there as soon as possible. With that being said... Some of these parts are going to be reused, the case, of course, what I bought it for, and maybe it'll see life once once more sometime. But um, anyway, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my Twitter, really trying to get people to follow me there. That's where I'm planning on posting all my updates going forward, and see you next time.